In today's lesson, we're going to talk about different multiplication strategies you can use when multiplying multi-digit numbers together. But first, let's talk about some helpful tips. We'll review multiplying friendly numbers first. 3 times 60. This can be thought of as 3 times 6, which is 18. Then you can add this 0 to your product. It's important to know why you can add that 0. And in this case, it's because 60 represents 6 times 10, or 6 tens. So when adding zeros to your products, it's important to always remember why you can do that. And in this case, it was because this 60 represented 6 times 10. 70 times 2. You can think of this as 7 times 2, which is 14. Then you can add that 0 because 70 represents 7 tens or 7 times 10. So 7 times 10 times 2 is 140. 50 times 30. This can be thought of as 5 times 3, which is 15. Then you can add this 0 and that 0 over to the right. We add two zeros in our factors, so we can have two zeros in our product in this case. This 50 represents 5 times 10, and that 30 represents 3 times 10. Our last example, 400 times 30. You can think of it as 4 times 3, which is 12. Then you can add this 0, that 0, and this 0 over here. And thanks to our first three examples, now you know why you can add those zeros. Great. Our last helpful tip is to review expanded form. This two is in the ones column. The ones column is always furthest to the right. Then we have the tens column, and to the left of the tens is the hundreds column. This two is in the hundreds column. It represents 200. This seven is in the tens column. It represents seven tens, or 70. And this two is in the ones column. It represents Two. When we're writing an expanded form, it's important to remember that we need to add those addition symbols. Okay, let's talk about our first strategy. We're going to look at the distributive property. 35 times 17. It will be helpful to you to write 35 and 17 in expanded form. That 3 represents 30 because it's in the tens column, and that's just 5. That 1 represents 10, and that 7 is just 7. Let's multiply our tens. 30 times 10, then... 30 times 7, next, 5 times 10, and 5 times 7, which leaves us with 300, 210, 50, and 35. Then we add them all together for a final product of 595. Let's do one more example, 28 times 36. Let's put 28 in expanded form. That 2 represents 20, that 8 is 8, that 3 is 30, that 6 is 6. We'll put parentheses around each expanded form. Great. 20 times 30. Then 20 times 6. Now 8 times 30. And 8 times 6. Which leaves us with 600, 120, 240, and 48. We'll add them all together for a final product of 1,008. Next, we're going to talk about how to use an open array. We've got 13 times 74. They're both two-digit numbers, so we have two columns and two rows. This 1 represents 10, we'll put it there. That 3 is 3. The 7 represents 70, we'll put it there. And that 4 is just 4. We're all set up. Now it's time to multiply. 70 times 10. You can think of this as 7 times 1, which is 7, and add your two zeros. Next, 70 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21, and we add that 0. 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 3 is 12. The last step, add them all up for a final product of 962. Let's do one more example with the open array. 25 times 32. Again, we have two two-digit numbers, so we'll have two columns and two rows. That 2 represents 20, that 5 is 5. That 3 is in the tens column, we'll put it over here because it represents 30. And that 2 is just 2. Now we're all set up. Time to multiply. 30 times 20. Think of it as 3 times 2, which is 6. Add your two zeros. 30 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. We'll add that zero. 2 times 20 is 40. 2 times 5 is 10. Last step, add them all up for a final product of 800. Next, we'll talk about partial products. Place value is extremely important to consider when using this strategy. This is the ones column furthest to the right and that's the tens column to the left of the ones. We'll begin multiplying in the ones column. Eight times six is 48. Next, six times two. Remember, this two is in the tens column. 
it actually represents 20. So 6 times 20 is 120. 3 times 8, remember that 3 is also in the tens column, it represents 30. So 30 times 8 is 240. Now 2 times 3, they're both in the tens column. So this 2 represents 20, this 3 represents 30, 20 times 30 is 600. Let's add all of these partial products together. Let's begin by adding in the ones column. 8 plus 0 is 8, 4 plus 2 plus 4 is 10. We bring that 1 to the hundreds column. 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus that 1 is 10 for a final product of 1008. Lastly, we're going to talk about a traditional or a standard algorithm. It looks like we're about to work with the partial product strategy, but it's actually quite a bit different. We begin multiplying in the ones column. 8 times 6 is 48. But that 4 can't go there using the standard algorithm. It actually represents 40. It belongs in the tens column. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. Now as we move to the tens column, we need to put a 0 in the next line. So 3 times 8 is 24. But remember, that 2 can't go there, so it goes up here in the tens column. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. Let's add these numbers together to get our final product. Beginning in the ones column, 8 plus 0 is 8, 6 plus 4 is 10. We bring that 1 to the hundreds column. 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10 for a final product of 1008. I hope this video reminds you that there are many different strategies you can use when multiplying. I look forward to seeing which ones are your favorites, and I can't wait to see what strategies you come up with.